Hello, I'm Benjamin Dalodier, radiologist at the Sport Clinic. I will present to you the ultrasound study of the posterior hip. The muscle of the posterior part of the hip joint are composed by the trochanteric pelvic muscle group and the hamstring muscle. The trochanteric pelvic, pelvic muscle group are short lateral hip rotators. They are made up by six muscles located on the dorsal side of the coxofemoral joint. By their insertion, we can differentiate those with intrapelvic insertion like piriformis and internal obturator complex, those with extrapelvic insertion like quadratus femoris and external obturator. All are inserted on the greater trochanter while being interconnected between vein and gluteal structure. Quadratus femoris is the most powerful pelvic trochanteric muscle. It participates in the dynamic stabilization of the coxofemoral joint and occupies the femoral hamstring region. It can undergo a nutcracker effect even if case of reduced space. The gemellus obturator complex intervenes in the counter nutation, which is the first stage of the childbirth. Indeed, due to its angulation at the exit of the pelvis and its femoral insertion, this large muscle with three parts help the counter nutation. The counter nutation increases the dimension of the upper straight at the moment when the head of the child engages. The piriformis is a biarticular muscle which crosses in front of the sacroiliac joint and behind the coxofemoral joint. During the walk, it performs a succession of contraction and relaxation, harmonizing and synchronizing the movement of the sacrum relative to the ilium, so it avoids overuse of the sacroiliac joints. Hamstring structures are composed by common tendon from the semitendinosus and biceps femoris muscle and on tendon of the semimembranosus muscle. They are both inserted on the ischiatic bone. The common tendon is inserted on the medial part of the ischiatic bone and the tendon of the semimembranosus muscle is inserted on its lateral part. The sciatic nerve is near this antesis in its lateral side and is underlying femoral quadratus femoris. Below the ischiatic bone insertion, the semimembranosus tendon begins to switch under the common tendon. Below the switch of the semimembranosus tendon, we can differentiate what we can call the Mercedes sign. Indeed, the semitendinosus muscle can be considered as a digastric muscle with a central septum. This central septum is the upper part of the Mercedes sign. The medial part is the semimembranosus tendon and the lateral part is the sciatic nerve. The study of the posterior hip muscle groups begin with the study of the hamstring muscle group. We find at the level of the posterior hip the own tendon of the semimembranosus located just below the semitendinosus muscular structure. The joint hamstring tendon concerning the biceps femoris muscle and the semitendinosus muscle as well as the sciatic nerve at the lateral face of these two tendon structures. When we move upward by the elevator technique to study these structures, we always find on the lateral face of this myotendinous grouping the sciatic nerve. The own tendon of the semimembranosus begins its switch towards the lateral face of the ischiatic bone 
while the joint hamstring tendon continues its path in a rectilinear way towards the medial face of the ischiatic bone. In this area, you have to play with the anisotropy effect to better study the different tendon structures of the hamstring. The set of these three items is called the Mercedes sign at the level of the posterior hip and corresponds to the sciatic nerve at the level of its lateral item, to the own tendon of the semimembranuses at the level of its medial item and to the joint hamstring tendon at the level of its superficial item. The sciatic nerve is therefore located at the lateral face of the hamstring emphasis at the ischiatic level. This sciatic nerve will serve as a benchmark for the study of the pelvitrochanteric muscles of the posterior hip. As I said earlier, it is the sciatic nerve that will serve as a benchmark. It is therefore located at the level of the lateral aspect of the hamstring emphasis of this ischiatic level, then immediately above the quadratus femoris muscle and immediately below the maximus gluteus. This quadratus femoris muscle is a large muscle located at the level of the hamstring fossa, which can be injured by extrinsic trauma or by the nutcracker effect. The sciatic nerve is generally appreciated by also using the anisotropy effect actually but also sagittally. It then travels upwards above the gemellar internal obturator complex that can be individualized in this patient but more difficult to individualize in current practice. The internal gemellar obturator complex is formed by a large central tendon structure which is inserted at the level of the medial portion of the greater trochanter and by two overlying and underlying muscular structures. Du tendon conjoint du ischio jambier et du tendon propre du semi-membraneux. Nous avons le nerf sciatique au milieu de l'écran et nous allons. The overlying portion corresponds to the upper twin muscle, while the underlying portion corresponds to the lower twin muscle. The sciatic nerve, with its characteristic fibrillary aspect, travels just anteriorly to this large myotendinous complex. Et lorsqu'on translate latéralement la sonde au niveau de la portion médiale. We continue to follow this sciatic nerve which translates medially and deeply at the level of the buttock until the infrapariform foramen. The muscle that is therefore just above the plunge of the sciatic nerve is the periformis muscle. It therefore suffices to translate the probe passing from the strict axial section to the oblique sagittal section to better study this sciatic vascular pedicle at its entry into the small pelvis. Hamstring pathologies are generally tendinosis, tendon tear or tendon avulsion at the ischiatic area. Tendon tear is represented by a thin anechogic lesion in both plane, sagittal plane and axial plane, and avulsion of the tendon are generally represented by a displacement of the ischiatic bone in the caudal part of the hamstring. Tendon tear or tendinosis of the common tendon are usually more superficial than own semi-membranosus tendon. Indeed, semi-membranosus tendon is deeper than common tendon of the hamstring. Pelvi trochanteric muscle lesion are mainly ischiotorontaric impingement concerning quadratus femoris with edema and bursitis. These lesions are more easy to assess and follow with MRI than ultrasonography. The second most often lesion 
is extrinsic traumatism, which is also represented by edema and sometimes bursitis of the hypodermis area. Ultrasound is the first line exam for exploring groin pain. It must be combined with standard radiographic assessment. First it searches for muscle and tendon anomalies, particularly in the adductors. It's also the best exam to explore the inguinal canal by looking for a sports hernia and by differentiating the sports hernia from a digestive hernia. However, as part of the pre-operative assessment, it is often necessary to couple ultrasound with MRI. MRI reminds a second-line exam. It makes a positive diagnosis of pubalgia by looking for adductor anomalies, lesions of the pubic symphysis and sometimes inguinal orifices anomalies. It also makes a differential diagnosis with coxal femoral and bone pathologies. We are now coming to the end of this video. I hope it has been useful to you and I wish you a good exploration.